Hi, everyone. My name is Kiran Bageshpur. I am joined on this webinar by uh, three other people. Uh, I have with me uh, Dak Bush, who is a senior director of our Cloud Alliances team here. We also have joining us today a special guest, Tim Kressler, who is a the Azure Storage Product Manager and has closely worked with us in this uh, Azure native Cumulo Scalable File Services we want to tell you all about. Also joining us is uh, Nick Carter, a dev manager and lead engineer on the product that we are talking about today. So once again, thank you all for joining. I see that we have uh, a combination of uh, partners, prospects, as well as customers. So without much ado, let's get going. Uh, look, this is all about data. We are all about data and nothing to, uh, nothing, nothing, be no better way to start than by uh, uh, by referencing Tim Berners-Lee, Berner -Lee, Berners -Lee, I guess it is certain now uh, that data is a precious thing and will last longer than the systems themselves. Certainly has been my experience in the last uh, decade or so. Quickly walking over the agenda, uh, I want to just kind of remind, especially the ones who are new uh, to Cumulo here, what our mission is and what our vision is. Uh, sort of hint at the challenges that exist with file in the cloud and why we went off and built uh, the uh, Azure native Cumulo scalable file service. And then I'll hand it over to Dak uh, and Tim and Nick to walk us through what exactly the service offering is, why it is compelling from an Azure uh, point of view, as well as give you a quick flavor for the demo. It's pretty cool. And then we'll wrap it up and open it up for Q&A. So just to remind those folks who are new to Cumulo, our business, we are all about data. Our business is to help our customers, many of you, to store, manage, and curate your data anywhere. And the key there is anywhere uh, and forever. Look, we live in the age of data. There's no questions about this. I have been in the data world for about 15, 18 years now. And it's been pretty astonishing for me to see a world where 100 terabytes was an enormous amount of data and the, the most dense drives available were 750 gigabyte drives to a world where you're talking about drives which are getting close to 60 terabytes apiece and a petabyte will fit into four, U, four rack units. And that is really driven as you, our customers and prospects and partners know, by two different trends. Number one is the trend that in every vertical, whether it is media, healthcare, whether it is security or life sciences, the devices that generate data are getting more and more numerous and they're getting higher and higher fidelity in the way they produce data. Two, the data has got longer and longer uh, retention cycles and long greater and greater value. And it powers a lot of the applications, whether it is Machine learning applications, I mean, we live in the world of chat GPT, and if nothing else, that is driven by an enormous amount of data. And these trends are applicable everywhere to every one of our customers and prospects business. And by the way, it's not just growing, it is spreading. If you went back even just 10 years ago, almost all the data lived on premises in a customer's walled garden, if you will, in their data centers, uh, but it's now proliferated out to the edge, whether the edge is a movie studio shooting in Hungary, or it is a, a hospital or a set of hospitals which now have both sequencing as well as high resolution uh, imaging technology out at the edge, which was not common 10 years ago. And of course, the thing which has been most disruptive in the last decade to 15 years is the emergence of the cloud. And we are here to talk about how we are partnering with uh, Microsoft Azure on that front, emergence of the cloud. And all of these workflows and our customers have told us have sort of expanded from one location to many locations, both on premises as well as at the edge of their infrastructure and certainly into the cloud. And this is what we're here to talk about. What we do is offer a radically simple way to store, manage exabyte scale data anywhere that you want it to be. Uh, it's a software only solution as many of you know. 
Um, and how do we do this? How does this work? Uh, it's really a pretty straightforward scale out architecture, which has been ground up, built to be software only, completely independent of underlying hardware uh, constraints and built with software technology to ensure that we can take advantage of the best available commodity SSDs, whether they are SaaS SSDs um, you know, 10 years ago or it's NVMe attached all flash today uh, or hard drives with intelligent software to go prefetch between this data. On the front end, we are multi-protocol completely. We speak NFS, we speak all variants of SMB, we have a REST API, you know, S3, FTP, pretty much anything and it all looks like a single name space. You could go from literally 100 terabytes to 100 petabytes in that single name space. And you have the flexibility as a customer to run it uh, on multiple platforms on premises. You have a list of various platforms we support today, and there'll be more coming. And certainly in the cloud where we are already present. However, I really want to go spend time as we go into this conversation to talk about what we do in Azure because that is unique and differentiated and very different than our presence in the other cloud providers. Okay, having laid that sort of foundation, I want to talk about where we are going and what our vision is, which I have already hinted at a little bit here. Uh, our vision is we are providing you a platform, a platform for unstructured data storage and management. It's software only. It scales anywhere and it scales simply. It scales whether you're on premises, whether you're in the cloud or at the edge. And it's for all at scale unstructured data workflows in the modern hybrid enterprise. Whether you're talking about digital pathology, you're talking about genome sequencing, you're talking about packs in the healthcare world, epic blob support, you're talking about video surveillance, you're talking about media entertainment, VFX rendering, any of these workflows which involve large volumes of data that is today getting geographically distributed within your enterprise core as well as into the cloud, that's where we play. And really it is robust uh, with multiple protocol support, ties into your enterprise infrastructure, which we already do. That's kind of the vision out here. Uh, and honestly, the last piece is, I wanna leave you with is, it's one architecture, doesn't matter where you run, it's the exact same architecture, exact same software. Uh, and a part of the vision is for us to be able to stitch all of this together into a single namespace. We don't yet do that, but stay tuned for announcements through the rest of this year. A single management interface across all of these systems, across all of these locations, we don't yet do it today, but stay tuned for announcements later on through the year. And certainly we want to be simple, not just from a product point of view, but also from a commercial point of view. And that means the ability to have a single licensing model across all of your data infrastructure, across all of your locations, and a single price, which is transferable. We have started to do this with our largest and most strategic customers. And I look forward to being able to roll this out in the next 12 to 24 months in a much more broader manner, okay? As we switch and talk about uh, the cloud particularly, I wanna go bring to attention a couple of data points that we get not just from third-party analysts, but what our customers, you have told us. Number one, data is growing. That's kind of a Captain Obvious statement. Everybody knows that, but it's still pretty substantial as to how much it's growing. And the big piece here is the massive growth in data is really around unstructured data. That is things which live outside of a database, not things which live in SQL or NoSQL, but live as files or object. The other very interesting thing to note is on premises, 80% plus of this data is file data. In the cloud, it's about 5% of this data is file data. The rest of it is overwhelmingly object and the big attach has been cloud native applications. Our customers and prospects we talk to 
uh, with multi-petabyte file workloads are really hungry to cost-effectively leverage the exact same enterprise class, multi-protocol, file services on-premises that they have also in the cloud. That's kind of what many of, many of you have told us. The other thing you got to ask, we as a company have to ask ourselves is great, so where's the money? And I want to go share this as a customer with, as customers and prospects with you, both you and everyone tells us, and we know this from observations of data, that a vast majority of the growth of your file data going forward is going to be in some way, shape or form hybrid. It doesn't mean that what you have on premises goes away, it just means a lot of the growth in the aggregate is going to be in, um, in the cloud. And this is kind of why we are very excited about this partnership with, uh, with Microsoft Azure. Uh, and that's kind of uh, uh, what we want to be talking to you about throughout this presentation. Okay. So what's the problem with file data in the cloud today that you have? Uh, first of all, it's actually pretty expensive. So we that's the first thing we've got to go put on the table and you will see us make progress on that front all along the way. Uh, but it's really complicated to share data between file and object workloads. I mean, you land up essentially doing copying from one place to the other and copying it back because they are essentially completely separate namespaces. It's really difficult to leverage that data in an easy manner between your on-premise applications and your on and your cloud native applications. Those things are completely different silos. Uh, moving data between the clouds or between cloud and on-premises is a science experiment at the end of the day. Uh, very different interfaces, very different management platforms for each of these environments. And not only is file today as it stands in the cloud expensive, but it's also, you can't quite go off and refactor your applications uh, to work in the cloud natively. Now, granted, some of our customers, some of you have done this for some applications, but it is not economically tenable to do that across the board. And if you did that, you have now decided to be all in the cloud or all on premises, whereas reality is our customers, you tell us that what you really need is a hybrid infrastructure. So, uh, there is no partner, no cloud provider today who is as consistently and systematically hybrid uh, and embraces customers where they are rather than telling you how you should do your uh, infrastructure is Microsoft uh, Azure. Very excited to have partnered with them over these, uh, these many months. And this is introducing the Azure native Cumulo Scalable File Services. I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to Dak Bush, Senior Director of Cloud uh, for us here at, uh, at uh, Cumulo, and he will uh, bring in uh, appropriately Nick Carter, our Dev Manager and Lead Engineer on this project, as well as uh, Tim Pressler, our Product Manager on the, on the other side, on Microsoft. Excellent. Hey, thank you, Kieran, for that uh, intro and, and uh, level setting for the team. Um, can everyone see my screen? Excellent. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what Azure Native Cumulo Scalable File Service is. First and foremost, a huge part, and, and keep in mind the branding here, Azure Native, is about simplicity. This is software as a service. It gives you predictable capacity-based pricing. That means that you can predict what your Azure bill will be. You don't uh, have to uh, struggle to understand transaction charges uh, or any uh, surprises on your bill. It's built natively on Microsoft Azure, which means it, it leverages all of the, the native cloud infrastructure uh, as a service elements of the Azure offering. And it does that with VNet injection, which I'll talk about in a bit more detail after we kick off the demo. 
that uh, is a huge factor in simplifying the deployment. And right along with that simplicity is the ability to deploy from the Azure portal and have whatever capacity you choose up and running in less than 15 minutes. So that's about the simplicity. Now over on the right here, you'll see that uh, it says all the future features of Cumulo Core plus this deep integration with Microsoft Azure. So uh, what Kieran talked about, and for those that are more familiar with uh, Cumulo, it's the same features, functionality, UI, REST API. Uh, if you've used our solution uh, on another cloud or on-prem, you're going to have the same experience uh, from a storage administrative perspective on Azure. Uh, so you get all that same feature and functionality. But what makes it a bit different on Azure versus the competition? Well, first of all, it's scale out. You deploy whatever you need. And since it's the cloud, you really should start with uh, uh, the capacity you need day one. Uh, you don't have to over provision like you typically would do on prem. Uh, and then you grow it as you uh, add, you know, as your as your workloads demand and your business demands. Uh, today, we can do easily a 10 petabyte uh, or more in a single namespace with billions of files. And by the way, um, sometimes uh, people will associate file count with capacity and they start to ask questions about the cloud um, in, in our file system. It doesn't matter uh, how much capacity you have. We literally have customers with, you know, billions of files and 100 terabyte. So regardless of file count at any capacity, and then you can scale your capacity up. On the performance front, our performance starts around two gigabyte per second, and we can scale to 20 gigabyte plus uh, on the throughput front. And that's tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of IOPS, uh, and all relatively low latency. So uh, the way to to think of that is that comparing it to a lot of the file system offerings in the cloud, since this is scale out and it's leveraging the cloud in a very natural fashion with multiple compute instances, uh, our performance really picks up where a lot of others leave off. And then uh, uh, it is truly multi-protocol, so compatible with Windows, Linux, Mac, Let's spend a little bit more time on that. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we you hear everyone talk about NFS, SMB, uh, perhaps S3 or FTP, uh, if you've got some older workloads, if you will. Uh, our multi-protocol support allows you to access the same data uh, uh, with any of those protocols simultaneously. So uh, respective of locks, of course. So you could have uh, NFS export and SMB share and an S3 bucket, all uh, uh, putting, reading, and writing to a given directory and have that true multi-protocol experience. So that's what allows you to, to mix file and object workloads or NFS and SMB workloads or any of the three. Now, some may see S3 and say, uh, hey, you're talking about Azure, why are you talking about S3? Uh, S3 and the S3 API is supported on Cumulo uh, as a, a first party protocol or first class citizen, if you will. Um, why is that interesting on Azure? It's interesting because there are on-prem workloads that want to move to the cloud that may be using S3, there may be uh, workloads in other clouds that are using S3 that want to migrate to Azure. Uh, with Cumulo, you have that flexibility. You can enable uh, those object workloads that are using S3. Um, <clears throat> we manage all of those permissions between those protocols with our cross-platform, uh, or actually this is, should say cross-protocol permissions. Um, and then finally, uh, our, our MFA and SSO, uh, which we recently introduced, if you've been following the cadence of these webinars, is also available and can be integrated with Active Directory uh, on Azure. So that's what it is. Um, how do you deploy it? So I'll just give you a quick overview here and then I'll hand off to Nick. Uh, you go to the Azure portal. Uh, you can t choose to search on the, the full name of the service, uh, Azure Native Cumulo Scalable File Service, 
or you can type in Cumulo or SMB or NFS or uh, many other uh, file system rel related searches and you will see our service pop up. Click on that, uh, enter your performance, your capacity, your region, uh, some other details, and in about 15 minutes or less, your storage will be up and running uh, with Nix injected into your account. And like I said, after Nick kicks off the demo, I'll talk a bit more about that as I talk about how we secure the service. Also, if you have a, a Microsoft Azure consumption commitment, a Mac as it's called, uh, any of uh, consumption of the Cumulo service through Marketplace, and we always transact through Marketplace, counts towards your commitment. So with that, I'll hand off to Nick to kick off the demo. All right, uh, I'll pull up here the Azure portal, which already in my uh, recent services, we can see Azure native, but I could go up to the search bar, type NFS, and we say come up or SMB. It's there too, as well as an, another few keywords. Um, I can hit the create button and be taken to a form uh, where with just a few questions, um, I will be able to kick off the deployment of the Cumulo scalable file service in Azure. Uh, I've already filled out a few of these in my next tab over, so I don't have to talk and type. Uh, I choose a resource group, a resource name, region, a zone, an initial password for your administrator account. And I can choose um, a storage class of either standard or performance, as well as a capacity in terabytes. Uh, if I just put in 250 for this, um, presentation here. Uh, hit next, go to networking, where I can choose a uh, virtual network and subnet where uh, the network interfaces for my Camilo file system will be deployed, set tags, and go ahead and to review and create. Uh, like any other Azure resource, validations get run, and I can go ahead and cr click the create button. That initializes a deployment. Um, and about 12 to 15 minutes later, we'll have a cumulative cluster to work at, look at. Um, back to DAC until then. Thank you, Nick. Um, so we'll come back and visit, uh, revisit that deployment. It'll take uh, uh, 14, 15 minutes for it to deploy. Uh, I wanted to spend some time on how we secure this Azure Native Cumulo offering. Since it is running the cloud as a service, uh, those questions uh, are very valid and, and do come up. Um, let's start with the fact that, as we've said, it's the same software uh, regardless of where you're running it. So all of the layers of the onion, if you will, that you see on the right hand side of the screen that we've invested in and developed over uh, the last uh, decade, all are able to be leveraged uh, in the Azure offering. So let's just start at the center here. Uh, encryption at rest, that's FIPS 140 certified. Uh, by the way, um, if you didn't make it to the Simply Secure webinar uh, previously, our FIPS 140 certification applies to anything and everything that is encrypted uh, in the Cumulo software offering. So that's data at rest, data in flight, uh, that's UI sessions, uh, S3 sessions, uh, any encryption for, for any protocol, whether that data is in flight or at rest, all FIPS 140 certified. Of course, there's bit rot detection. That kind of forms your, you know, fundamental innate defenses. <laughs> if you jump out one layer, uh, and previously we had this as a build out, but I, I just put it all up here because um, I kind of like the, the eye chart that it is. Uh, it, it shows the, the complexity and the layers of, of security that we add. The next layer is the configurable features. Uh, that's a, a rich area and rich subject, but I'll touch on a few. Of course, there's Active Directory, uh, we have quotas, export restrictions, SMB ACLs, uh, uh, 
role-based uh, access control for fine granularity on the administrative front, uh, NFS v4.1 uh, with Kerberos, uh, encryption in flight, <clears throat> um, a, a, a lot of, of flexibility here, recently added uh, long-lived access tokens for the API uh, and, and SSO. So that forms, you know, that configurable layer. Then you hit our, our, our building blocks. And those are things like our audit log, um, where you'll see soon uh, uh, that outer layer has Veronis coming. Um, we've enhanced our audit log. We'll talk more about that in a future webinar. But that audit log, continue. we continue to invest in that. So you have full visibility. It all creates, uh, uh, modifies uh, at the metadata level as well as uh, file access and admin access. Replication. Kiran talked about the difficulty of getting data to and from the cloud. With our continuous replication, super simple and elegant to get data from your on-prem systems or systems in other clouds uh, to your Azure native Cumulo file system. Super straightforward. You can use continuous replication. You can do snapshot based replication. You can have different snapshot policies on your target system. A lot of flexibility there. And, and some don't realize this, but you can do one to many and many to one replication as well. <laughs> that adds more flexibility and can help you tailor your environment to uh, the costs that align with your business. The things in orange are are on the uh, radar. Uh, some places that we're also beefing up uh, in the future here are snapshot locking. Our snapshots are immutable today. This will be one additional layer of security where you can actually prevent anyone from being able to delete a snapshot. So while they are immutable, you'll also be able to lock them. And you see worm coming as well. In that outermost uh, circle, our integrations with our partners, where they've integrated with our API, our audit log, uh, uh, people like Networks and Veronis, Veeam, Commvault, Rubrik, just to name a few. Now, you get all of that, whether you're uh, on-prem today and looking at Azure or looking at your cloud first and you're just discovering Cumulo, all of that uh, is able to be uh, leveraged in our Azure native Cumulo offering. Some of the things that we've done with Azure um, that at first may seem like a small thing is a feature called VNet injection. Um, this has multiple dimensions, uh, both from a simplicity perspective, uh, cost perspective, and security perspective. So I wanted to spend a bit of time on that. First, you've heard us say that our, our NICs are NICs are injected into your VNet. I want to be really clear about that. What happens with VNet injection is that NICs are injected into a delegated subnet in your chosen VNet. And then uh, one immediate benefit is that is that you do not have to coordinate IP space with us. We're hosting the service uh, in our tenant. Uh, you get a dedicated instance. Uh, there is there's nothing multi-tenant going on. Your data is uh, not exposed, shared in any way within the service. It's all dedicated to you. But if you think back to Nick kicking off uh, that deployment, he just chose a, a delegated subnet and your VNet that you had specified. That's all there is to it. You don't have to even call us to coordinate IP space. It's fully routable like any other subnet in your VNet uh, and in your tenant. And there are no VNet peering charges. So that means there's no charges to connect from your VNet to the Cumulo VNet hosting the Azure Native Cumulo service. And on the security topic, uh, it looks like any other NIC, so you get to support network security groups this way. If you say, hey, it's great that Cumulo has SMB, NFS, FTP, REST, and S3, but I only want to expose 443 for the UI and, and 445 for SMB. I want to block everything else. You can choose to do that with network security groups. So you can administer your security posture just like you would on any other interface. Finally, 
uh, stay tuned in upcoming webinars to learn more about our, our HIPAA certification that we're currently in flight on. And that will be a, a, a key enabler to the, the healthcare vertical. Now I want to touch on, so we've talked about, you know, what it is, how do you deploy it, uh, how is it secured. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the use cases that we've seen and that we continue to uh, deliver uh, successful business outcomes for every day. Uh, on the media and, and communications front, video editorial really took off during the pandemic and it hasn't backed off since. People learned a different way to work and how to leverage the cloud. Uh, it gave them access to uh, resources that were outside of their geographic constraints um, and let them move forward with their production pipelines. So whether that's traditional video editorial, um, corporate video editorial for training uh, or commercials, or VFX, uh, all the way from basic <coughs> simple VFX to full-blown animation type workloads, uh, we see those uh, very commonly in the cloud. Render as well. And the render could be uh, off-box render for something like uh, Adobe. Uh, all the way to, like I said, full-blown animation render. Moving into healthcare, two workloads that we frequently see are uh, VNAs, Vendor Neutral Archives in the PAC space moving to the cloud, uh, as well as Epic Blob. And that's unstructured data in the Epic ecosystem in support of uh, uh, those, those hospital uh, data sets. Life Sciences, Genomics pipelines, specifically here, uh, uh, you can dramatically accelerate either the throughput of your genomic sequencing um, or minimize the time to process uh, genomes uh, that you've sequenced previously. Uh, that can be done with things like Illumina Dragon, uh, as well as more traditional open source GATK pipelines. And then an emerging field is digital pathology. Here we see uh, a lot of training go on on-prem uh, with uh, that trained information informing the AI and processing uh, with a lot of high performance compute against those data sets uh, in the cloud. The great cloud workload because it's uh, data or compute intensive and, and a ton of data because it's, it's image rich. In the oil and gas space or energy and resources, <coughs> subsurface modeling, uh, you know, we're doing this today in the cloud. And I believe we'll see more and more of this as, uh, as energy companies continue to heavily invest in, in how they look to, to, you know, both optimize wells as, figure out, as well as figure out where they want to drill a new one. Um, and then financial services. Uh, here we see a lot of data curation and compliance workloads. So those might not sound exciting, but those are actually fairly intense. Uh, think of that as uh, that could be as anything from closing records for, for uh, mortgages to more traditional financial data uh, where a corporation has to enforce a compliance posture all the way to archives where they want to offer historical data to a member set that they then monetize. So that's that's five uh, verticals where we see uh, cloud workloads commonly. Across any of those verticals, we frequently see business continuity as a requirement. And for those that are less familiar with the cloud, maybe they're just starting their Azure journey, this will be a place where they may want to first experiment. Um, and those experiments rapidly turn into real legitimate um, key business workloads uh, for disaster recovery. And then uh, uh, I would say their second step in their journey will be looking at how they can consolidate corporate shares and, and home directories on Azure. Again, this is where Cumulo's single namespace is really valuable because if you have uh, limitations on volume size or the number of volumes like many offerings do, uh, specifically on volume size or protocol constraints on those volumes, 
being able to have all of that data in a single namespace with multi-protocol support with any capacity you need to facilitate your use case is very valuable. Those expectations are well established on-prem. We're delivering on those same expectations in the cloud. So with that, I'm going to hand off to Tim Kresler from Microsoft uh, and let him share his perspective on our partnership. Tim? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate the time. So I'm a Microsoft product manager. I've been working with Cumulo for about the last eight months. But, but prior to my time at Microsoft, I was actually a Cumulo employee. Really, really proud of this initiative and really proud that uh, Cumulo is a strategic Azure partner. Um, there really are not any other storage vendors that are as tightly coupled to Microsoft Azure as Cumulo is right now. Um, they're a member of our um, Azure Native project, which has a couple of other vendors in different spaces, like Nginx and things like that, but no other storage vendors. Uh, it changes the way that you interact with Cumulo's solution on Azure. It deploys like a first party native service. It's built straight through your Azure billing environment. Uh, it deprecates your Mac, your Microsoft commitment. Um, it lets you uh, kind of take advantage of Cumulo's service as a service. So it scales out uh, based on your needs. It's administered, it's administered and uh, upgraded and maintained by Cumulo's uh, uh, engineering resources. So everybody, everything is taken care of. You don't have to know or be an expert in Cumulo to deploy Cumulo inside of Azure. Um, integration with our Azure portal lets you deploy a cluster in 15 minutes. Nick will flip over and show you the successfully deployed cluster here in a few minutes. Um, which lets you deploy a Cumulo environment uh, to do some testing, to uh, support a new application, the tires, <laughs> whatever it might be that you want to do, uh, and have that instant on experience that you would have with any other Azure service like uh, Azure Block Blob or Azure Files or anything else like that. So you really get a fantastic native experience. And then the VNet injection is uh, completely different from what any other technology uh, will let you do inside of Azure. So uh, it really lets you basically insert a Cumulo cluster into your networking environment and treat that cluster the same as you would as though it was deployed 100% of your cluster while it's not. It's, it's actually being managed and maintained inside of, inside of Cumulo subscription. So you get all of the advantages of managing security and uh, all the, the kind of visibility to those resources that you want to have without having to deploy in all of those resources in your subscription. Um, you just pay for the Cumulo service. I'm incredibly proud of this partnership. I'm incredibly proud of all the work that Cumulo and Microsoft have done to make that make it uh, successful. And I'm happy to answer any questions as the as the time goes on. I appreciate it, Dak. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. So with that, I'm going to hand back over to Nick to take a look at that cluster we deployed. All right, we've got the green check mark here that our deployment completed. Uh, we can go ahead and click the go to resource button. And it shows us um, a resource in the Azure portal with some information about it uh, that represents our Cumulo instance. Um, it includes what subnet and virtual network we were deployed into, um, has a handy link of one of the IPs to go and log in, um, and also has a list of the different endpoints that are available to um, distribute traffic across. We can find uh, this link and go to uh, a local VM in the virtual network and put in our address. Plug in the, the admin account and the password that was set during deployment. And here is an already uh, available and configured Cumulo instance ready to accept data and service your clients. I have one that um, I've already plugged in a little bit of data and workload on that we can look at um, of the same size. And I've been running a load against it that we're getting uh, about 26,000 IOPS and um, 3.4 gigabytes of, of read and 1.3 of write um, that's been sustained overnight on this cluster. Um, like any other Cumulo cluster, you get analytics about um, the clients that are connected, 
I only have one connected right now. Uh, the distribution of traffic, uh, what connectivity is on each of uh, the endpoints available to your system. Uh, most of them here you can see are connected to uh, this one client that is an NFS workload. Um, and this box right here, I have one connected that's an over SMB and I can see uh, folders and files uh, just like any other Cumulo system. Along with that, you have the configuration of uh, different protocols, settings, um, identity management, and everything else that you expect from a Cumulo system. Doc, back to you. Thank you, Nick. So with that, um, we will go into Q&A. questions. Uh, and Jonah, are you helping us moderate that? Yes, I am happy to uh, list off any questions that come into Q&A. Uh, feel free to also use the chat. Uh, I believe you can also raise your hand and we can, uh, we can unmute. I'm just reviewing the, the chat now, so. Dak, we have one attendee with their hand raised. Um, I will unmute. Hey, good morning, guys. I really appreciate the demo. I have a quick question as far as uh, the provisioning. Uh, if you decide to go uh, increase the capacity uh, is that, I'm assuming it's as simple as provision it, you just go ahead and change the capacity and without any disruption, uh, you can, you can expand the cluster to a new capacity. Yeah. So for capacity, uh, expansions, uh, Maron, you, uh, either just drop a note saying you'd like some more capacity in your Cumulo Slack channel, uh, or reach out to your sales team, uh, and just tell us how much additional capacity you would like. Uh, our legal SLA is we will provide that additional capacity in 48 hours. Typically it happens uh, same business day, uh, assuming that you know, you're know you in normal business hours. Um, as far as the, the customer experience, we add that capacity for you. There's no work on your part. You just say, I wanna add, you know, got a 250 terabyte and I want you to add 50 terabyte. Um, we'll go add the capacity. <laughs> uh, you get uh, a quick quorum bounce as we add that capacity. Uh, so just the, the same experience you would have with capacity additions on prem, except you don't have to do any of the work. Thank you. And a follow up question. Um, is, is there a minimum size that you guys recommend the customers to increase their capacity? I have thought have had talks with uh, some storage vendors, they, they typically recommend, you know, 10% minimum when you reach certain threshold. Does that apply to Cumulo as well? Um, actually with this service, we can uh, facilitate any increment you want. Um, so, and you'll notice that even uh, when you deploy initially, uh, that uh, that slider is in one terabyte increments. So, uh, you know, if for some reason you have 250 terabyte and you'd like to add a terabyte, um, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, I appreciate it. You see any other questions out there or hands up, Jonah? I'm missing the hands up thing somehow. No other hands up right now, but if you, uh, in case anybody missed any of the Q&A that uh, Karana answered in chat, uh, you could go over those. It looks like we have a new one from Marissa in the chat. She says, I was unable to view this webinar. Uh, will there be a recording available, another one scheduled? Uh, yes, we are going to schedule a follow-up webinar uh, for some of the attendees who had difficulty joining. Um, so that's a heads up. If you join late, uh, we will follow up with, with an additional session. 
Okay, so if there are no other questions, um, I think I'll hand it back over to Kieran for uh, to wrap it up. Kieran, are you there? Oh, we may have lost Kieran. Zach, maybe you can close it out for us. Yep. Um, let me just reshare my screen. Okay, so uh, excuse me. As uh, Kieran laid the foundation of our vision and what we're delivering and evolving as we bring our features functionality uh, to market, it's all about scale anywhere and doing that simply. We have an enterprise proven solution focused on addressing that. 300% growth in unstructured data storage. It's software based, you get the same features and functionality, uh, regardless of where you choose to uh, deploy and run Cumulo. Our multi protocol support is second to none, it literally is the best in the industry. Um, those cross protocol permissions management across that protocol suite, especially in the cloud is a very unique differentiator at this point in the market. Our data security is robust uh, all the way from, you know, basic encryption at rest through our bit rot detection uh, and scrubbing uh, all the way through all of our uh, our encryption and FIPS 140 cert for in flight uh, data. Our real time analytics, we didn't spend a lot of time on that today, but you did see briefly from Nick some, a small part of uh, our real time analytics that you can get from our UI uh, or via our, our Open Metrics API. Uh, and then our rich data services, uh, that's kind of a combination of not only our protocol support, but also our continuous replication, uh, snapshot based replication. Uh, the ability to even get to your data via REST, as well as uh, uh, features and functions we'll be uh, announcing in the quarters to come. So when you look over on the right, what you see is one architecture deployed anywhere. Um, all of those, uh, those that infrastructure uh, or those clusters today are in a single namespace related to where they're deployed. But as Kieran pointed out, uh, we are developing a global namespace so we can unify the namespace between the cloud and your on-prem system or even between clouds. Uh, that'll be, uh, that'll really enable hybrid workloads uh, in a much more natural act. So stay tuned on that. Uh, our management interface, same experience wherever you're at, and we will be bringing a single pane of glass. So uh, more news on that in subsequent webinars as well as licensing and then uh, some additional price flexibility and elasticity that we'll be introducing. So all your workloads at scale, simply anywhere with enterprise proven uh, feature functionality. So with that, that's a wrap. Um, our next session, uh, look out for Never Migrate Again on April 4th. Also, we'll be talking uh, about some highlights again to the Azure Native Cumulo Scalable File Service uh, because it will be GA in April. It's publicly available now for production workloads. It will be the same service at GA. Uh, there's no reason not to go consume and deploy today. Um, what happens between now and GA is just um, dotting the I's and crossing the T's uh, on some Azure uh, requirements uh, for full GA. That's things like integration and support in the Azure SDK and API. Uh, but there's no need if anyone should think that, oh, you know, it's not GA, I might have to redeploy or something. No, that's not the case. You can deploy today, uh, migrate your data, um, be in production. Uh, GA is not going to have an impact to your service. It just adds a few bells and whistles. 
Thank you, Dan. Um, if I can jump in, I wanted to go before we close out, answer some of the questions that came in through uh, through the uh, Q and A. I do not know whether everybody had a chance to to look at that. So let me just sort of uh, toss them out. There was one question which was uh, about dedupe. Um, and we, Cumulo does not have dedupe built into the core file system, either on premise or in the cloud. And our experience is that uh, classic block level deduplication does not buy you much for a large scale unstructured data workload. Those things are really relevant when what you're storing is VMDKs or multiple copies of uh, you know, a database file and so on and so forth. Uh, but between backup software doing deduplication on the host software side and large scale data being quite distinct, dedupe is not something we focus on, but there are other data reduction techniques that we will be rolling out this year. Um, the next question was, when will Azure file service be available in Europe? Uh, we're working on it. The uh, real constraint is the fact that as a service offering, uh, we are subject to GDPR legal requirements and constraints, and therefore it is about dotting the I's and crossing the T from a legal requirements point of view as opposed to technology. Um, and also what is important, and I'd love for people to go share what countries they're asking about this, because the country matters. It is, even though it is the EU, it is not one answer for all the countries in the EU. So please, share with us which particular country is of highest priority to you. Uh, the third question was, uh, when uh, new features are released, are they all applicable to on-prem AWS or Azure deployment? And the answer is absolutely yes. It is one software stack, one architecture, and it's available on-premise in Azure and the other clouds. Uh, however, this doesn't mean that in the future, we may or may not d develop a functionality which is constrained to one cloud, perhaps Azure uh, itself, simply because that's tight integration with functionality available there that is not accessible on premises or in the other clouds. Don't want to get, get ahead of myself, but that is not off the books, but as of today, and the core functionality is always going to be identical in all three, lo in any all locations, edge, core, and cloud. Uh, the last comment was, uh, I was unable to view this uh, webinar. Will there be a recording available or another one scheduled? Uh, if there was anybody either present or people who were reaching out to the ones who are present, if there's a technical snafu, my sincere apologies. Yes, a webinar link will be available. And yes, we will have uh, additional webinars with similar content uh, about this service in the near future. So uh, that's that's kind of the close up. If I can wrap it up that for other conversations and other con uh, questions, please reach out to your sales team. If you are a prospect, if you are a customer, you can reach out to your sales team or your support team, or you could always reach out to to us uh, directly. I think there is a feedback form from a, with a QR code here too, uh, but look forward to hear from you. Thank you all. I guess that is a wrap now because I don't see any new questions coming up. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Kiran. And thank you for joining. Uh, we'll see you in April. <laughs>